you are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You may be seated. You're to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you, two of every kind of bird, of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you, and they are coming to you to be kept alive. I want to preach for a little while today using as a subject what one man won't do, another one will. <laughs> I'm scared to make you turn to your neighbor, but I... <laughs> Would you look at your neighbor and say, the pastor said, what one man won't do, another one will. New birth... Um, this week, a group of uh, doctoral students from the Payne Theological Seminary in Ohio came to shadow me this week to learn about our church, our church's history, our meteoric church growth, and how it has uh, become a model of cutting-edge ministry. They went on, on a tour of our 230-acre campus 370,000 square feet having been developed. When they came back from that tour, I was bombarded with an avalanche of questions in relationship to the sheer genius and the forethought around one of the most critical ministries that history will have to record. I told them emphatically that it had nothing to do with me but with the genius of the late Bishop Eddie Long. They asked me emphatically, what did I think was the secret to Bishop Long's success? And I told them that Bishop Long had a peculiar, unique capacity to tap into the cerebral vortex of the subconscious of the spiritual beings that are wrapped in the flesh to speak something that the church did not know how to pronounce in large measure. Bishop Long's secret was pushing the body of Christ to do what God mandated, which was to take authority. <laughs> Bishop Long speaking that message resonated with men all over the nation. As a consequence, from his time to this one, there has not been a church that has impacted as many men's life as new birth has. There is not a church that has spurred as many entrepreneurs as new birth has. There is not a church that has produced more homeowners than new birth has. There is not a church that produced more politicians than new birth has. There is not a church that influenced the culture as much as new birth has. There is not a church that has unpacked as many spiritual gifts as new birth has. I feel like I'm talking to visitors, people in this church know that it was under the sound of Bishop Long that you learned how to take authority over your own life. 
And because of that, you ought to give God glory even right now. Authority is the power to give orders. Authority is the power to make decisions. Authority is the capacity to enforce obedience. And the mantra of this ministry under our late apostle was to take authority, which means you have a responsibility to give orders, to make decisions, and to enforce obedience. As a consequence from the pulpit from which I stand, you were challenged to never take sides, but to take over. Because that is your God-given authority. Police have authority with a badge. Judges have authority with a robe. Bank managers have authority with a pen, but believers have authority with their language. Your authority is to order it, to command it, and to direct it. A silent believer knows no authority, but you have been given the task to speak those things that are not as though they already are. You'll notice in our church, nobody going to tell you to be quiet. Nobody going to tell you it don't take all of that. Nobody going to tell you you screaming too loud. They understand here, this is where you exercise your authority. What I do here is going to reverberate to where I work. What I do here is going to echo down at the bank. What I do here is going to shift into the hospital where my relative is. What I do here is going to change the atmosphere of my children in my home. Why? Because I take authority. But I need you to be clear that taking authority did not start with Bishop Long. Taking authority begins in Genesis. As a matter of fact, in uh, the first chapter, the 26th verse, God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness so that you may rule over the fish of the sea, the birds in the air, and the livestock that are in the ground. He said to Adam, you have, here's the word, authority over everything that's in the air. You have authority over everything that's in the water and you have authority over everything that's in the ground. And when you put that into perspective, that as the children of God, we have authority over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and the beast on the ground, might I argue forthrightly that maybe, just maybe, that we have, in fact, compartmentalize the, what Daniel went through in the lion's den should not be classified as a miracle. What happened with Daniel in the lion's den is not a miracle. When they shut the mouth of that den, Daniel must have exercised authority. Because this is what he is supposed to do. When they shut him in that lion's den, do you know what Daniel must have declared over himself? He must have declared over himself what I need you to declare over yourself. Would you lay hands over yourself right now? Lay hands on yourself. Those of you who are viewing online, lay hands on yourself. Declare after me, I will not get hurt. I need you to declare with authority, I will not suffer injuries. I need you to lay hands on yourself and declare out loud, my life is not at risk. Now that was your practice, let's try that thing again. Lay hands on yourself, I will not get hurt. 
not in a car accident, not from some Negro, not from a former fake friend, not from a family member. I will not get hurt. Lay hands on yourself. I will not suffer injuries. Nothing is wrong with my heart. Nothing is wrong with my reproductive organs. Nothing is wrong with my blood pressure. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There are no fibroids. There are no tumors. There are no cancer cells. Surgery will not be necessary. I will not be on medication the rest of my life. I will not require physical therapy. I, my life is not at risk. I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death and I will fear no evil. Why? Because God is with me. I'm not afraid of you firing me. I'm not afraid of you terminating me. I'm not afraid of you leaving me. I'm not afraid of you taking this house. I am not scared that you're going to take advantage of me. Why? His rod and his stare they comfort me you gotta understand God said in the month of May you are gonna walk around lions and you ain't gonna fear nothing because the power of God has given you authority first Peter first Peter 5 and 8 says be sober and be vigilant your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking somebody to devour. I need you to hear what the master likened the devil to. He likened the devil, hear this, to a lion. And you missed the key word, lion. As a child of God, I have authority over anything that's walking in the earth. Lions walk in the earth. And so I have authority over any principality that is in the earth. Don't you know the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty under God for the pulling down of strongholds. God said this month, police and operate your spiritual authority. Today you tell every devil that is assigned to you, you are under arrest. You don't know who you are messing with. I'm not one of these measly mouth Christians. I am a Christian that knows my authority. I bind every witch, every warlock, every demon, every rumor spreader, every gossiper, every hater. You don't even understand if God be for me, who can be a against me. I wonder if you'll walk in your authority today. Will you look at your neighbor and tell him a demon gotta die today? Whatever demon is in your house, whatever demon has attached to your child, whatever demon has attached to its marriage, he is going to die today. I didn't come to shout for no car. I didn't come for no money. I came to tell the devil, you have had four months to kill me, but because I'm still alive, I gotta walk in divine authority. I walk in the authority of God. You may be seated, please. I walk in the authority of God. I need you to be seated, please, please, please. I walk in the authority of God. I need you to just tap whoever's sitting next to you and tell them I got this. See, you gotta have one friend that don't mind fighting. You, you gotta have one friend that ain't gonna be cute or coy. They will take off their earrings. They will take off them heels. They'll put Vaseline on their face and say, I got you. I'm getting ready to handle it on your behalf. I 
dare somebody to just open up your mouth? God said, I gave you authority to defeat your friends' demons. Whatever they dealing with, you getting ready to pull the spirit of alcoholism out of them. The spirit of low self-esteem out of them. The spirit of promiscuity. Devil, you done mess with the wrong one. I cover all of my friends with my authority. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. I'm going to say it again. As I said it once, a demon going to die this month. Hallelujah. Softly, minstrels. Adam is deputized in Genesis chapter 1. He's deputized in Genesis chapter 1 to take authority over creeping things. Authority Adam is given over crawling things. Authority he has been deputized with is over flying things. That's in Genesis chapter 1. And then turn over two pages and get to Genesis chapter 3. His authority is put to the test when Eve is confronted by a snake. In Eve's defense, she was never given the instructions. Adam was. So the fall of man is not tied to Eve. It is tied to Adam's lack of taking authority over his house. God, y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. The worst thing you can do as a woman of God is to be connected to a man who don't know who he is. The Bible says submit, but it is with the caveat, only submit to a man who is submitted. If he don't know how to talk to stuff that's out of order, that ain't the man for you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He quick to talk you out of your drawers and out of your money, but it's slow to talk you out of your warfare. That is not the man for you. You gotta have a man that can talk with authority. Snake comes in the eve watch this and here's where we blame adam when adam discovers that it's a snake he should have been reminded that's his jurisdiction i got authority over flying things over swimming things and over crawling things God told me to tell just 500 of you that don't mind giving God worship. God said, I am giving you authority. Here's where you shout. You now have authority to destroy. Here it is. What destroyed family members? God, God, God I can't hear nobody. It got them, but it stops right here. God said, I need you to cry out loud because you getting ready to disrupt a generational curse. Your mama didn't know who she was. Your daddy was off the chain, but your son and your daughter will prophesy. Snakes ought to be stepped on. Snakes are supposed to be under your heel. Adam never set up an altar for false gods. Adam never burned an offering to a false god. He is thrown out of the garden, hear this, because he didn't use his authority. Because he didn't use his authority, he lost his authority. Some of you are on the edge of losing your authority. Hear this, because you don't let too much stuff slide. 
you, you don't let folk get away with stuff that you shouldn't have checked that you should have checked the first time but I want you walking in that office tomorrow saying try me here I was nice last week but this week somebody is gonna have to pay because I got authority Authority over everything that thinks they fly. You got to have authority over all these creeps. You got to have authority over everything that's under the water. So new birth, by the time we get to our text in Genesis 6, the master is sick of everything in the universe. Wickedness is the new wave. And God wants to do a hard reset. So he summons Noah to tell him to build the ark. He tells him, don't just build the ark. Here it is, build an ark that can endure elements. Then he said, watch this, uh, what it is that we have misconstrued in Sunday school and vacation Bible school. I read the text so you could hear it in Genesis 6, 19 and 20. God never told Noah, go get the animals. He never said, go get the animals two by two. That is not what he said. He said, I hope some of y'all will catch it, the animals are coming to you. Hallelujah. I, I, I need somebody to just pull that thing in. It's coming to me. Uh, that is the kind of authority you have just been anointed with. I'm waiting on new birth to show up. I said that is the kind of authority that God has just deputized you with. I'm waiting on my praises so I can hear your voice. God said this year, you ain't got to chase it. You ain't got to stalk it. You ain't got to hunt it. You ain't got to keep texting it. You ain't got to follow up with it. God said it's coming to you. Everything you've been praying for is getting ready to come to you. Pastor, how is it coming? It's coming pressed down. It's coming shaking together. It's is coming running over everything you need it's, uh, it's coming to you I want you to lift up your hand I want to speak something over your life softly musicians please help me I got to speak this over your life and maybe it's not for you, maybe it's for the people on your online. But God put in my spirit this week to announce to those of you with lifted hands that this is the chapter of your life. That God will send the kind of man or the kind of woman who will do what the last one didn't. Oh God, I can't hear nobody in here. Adam couldn't even take authority over snakes, but God could trust Noah with the whole zoo. See, some of you have given too much authority to folk that can't even handle the snake. God help me, but God said when the next one comes, they will be able to handle all of what God has given to you to have in the earth. Be seated, please. The man God sends next. The woman God sends next. Will do what the last one couldn't do or wouldn't do. I better say it for the people in the back. Who God sends next, you will know they are from God because they will do what the last one couldn't do or wouldn't do. God, help me. The one who comes next will not have to be reminded. 
The one who comes next will not need a tutorial on how you should be treated. The one who comes next will take the responsibility off of you so you won't have to lead all the time. The one who comes next will know what they are supposed to do so you don't have the responsibility of raising a grown-up that ain't your child. The one that comes next will offer help without you having to ask. The one that comes next will make sure that you got something to eat. The one that comes next will take care of your children as if they are their own. The one that comes next will not feel uncomfortable with your relationship with your mama. The one that comes next will not be insecure. The one that comes next will not treat you as an inconvenience or as an afterthought. The one that comes next will have no problem with your prayer life and with your commitment to God. The one that comes next will not have an issue asking questions about what they don't understand. The one that comes next will affirm what you do better than them and will not be confused about appropriated gender roles. The one that comes next will understand that you are not like anybody they ever encountered in their life. So they are to guard it with their life. The one that comes next will not wait till they lose you to figure out how they ought to love you. The one that comes next will understand that you are a sent from God. That there's only one of you that is born every day. 2,000 year the one that comes next will pray for you while you sleep the one that comes next will not be able to eat if you are unhappy the one that comes next you'll have to stop them from coming to the job when they hear what they did to you the one that comes next will not be able to be intimidated by the assignment on your life What one man won't do, God will find a replacement. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Holy God. <laughs> Thank you, Holy God. I feel something getting ready to break right here. This is for those of you that survived a divorce. Those of you that have been dealing with loneliness. Those of you that have been flirting about going back. God told me to tell you, stop where you are. Better is coming. What I got for you is going to make all the other stuff look like peanuts. Whatever they wouldn't do. You don't, you don't have to watch an old episode of Sanford and Son to know that one person's trash is another person's treasure. Atlanta, the flaw with that logic is that we fail to see that most times they were never qualified to do the appraisal. I need somebody online to type this so it'll just stay in the thread. Type this. I need somebody to have it. God told me to tell you, good people never lose value. I don't know who that was for in this room, but I got to give it to you again. Good people never lose value. Yeah. You never lose value. Even though you gained weight, you still got value went through a divorce or two, still got value. 
filed bankruptcy, still got value. You got poor credit, still got value. You are a convicted felon, still got value. Never finished college, still got value. Came out of a dysfunctional family, still got value. Got a shady past, still got value. Got a sordid sexual history, but still got value. God needed you to know in this moment, do not let other people reevaluate you. There is today, there is today an old time high, I need you to hear this, there is today an old time high, here's your shout, for used Rolexes. Y'all don't know what I'm saying. There's a value and a demand for used Rolexes. Here's where y'all got to shout. It used to be on somebody else's wrists, but somebody still wants it. You, you ought to be thankful under God. I can't hear nobody in here unless you've been in a coma. How you think you're going to marry somebody grown who ain't never been with nobody? Top selling timepiece in the marketplace is a Rolex that used to belong to somebody else. What you gonna do when God sends you what another man wouldn't do? God help me. Hi, y'all. Y'all got to forgive me. I'm talking to the first two rows. The first two rows been in church a long time. Let, let me talk to the last five rows. It, it, it ain't in the Bible. This is what Joe said. I, I want to do all the things your man wouldn't do. Yeah. I'll take you out on a night cruise on a yacht. Come on, y'all ain't been saved that long. That, 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 that God is going to connect you to somebody who is going to overturn what happened in your past so that you can finally feel free. Here it is to be vulnerable. You couldn't let yourself loose on somebody who you saw the red flags for. You couldn't completely allow yourself to be available for somebody who you knew was conditional. Now God said, my job is to send you a Noah. Here it is, because Adam never built anything. God, I can't hear nobody. <laughs> You, you don't need nobody in your life who ain't working on something. Adam never built nothing but Noah. What one man can't do, what one job couldn't do, what one career couldn't do, what one college couldn't do, God will find another one to do it. And that is what he's working on for you in the month of May. He is working on your replacement. I should really be able to drop the mic right there. He is working on your replacement. Don't cry over spilt milk when you're lactose intolerant. That ain't even who you're supposed to be with. That ain't even where you're supposed to be. And God knows how to send a replacement when the designated person drops the ball. Adam couldn't do it because he liked apple pie. Moses couldn't do it because he had anger management issues. Sarah couldn't do it because she laughed. Jacob couldn't do it because he was allergic to the truth. Joseph couldn't do it because he thought it was all a dream. 
David couldn't do it because he didn't know how to keep it in his pants. Saul couldn't do it because he had a jealous streak inside of him. Noah couldn't do it because we had to send him to rehab. Saul couldn't do it because he was jealous of who he was supposed to be mentoring. Jonah couldn't do it because his GPS broke down. Miriam couldn't do it because she had a brown paper bag complex. Jeremiah couldn't do it because he wrestled with depression. Elijah couldn't do it because he felt burnt out. Samson couldn't do it because he was too busy on Tinder. Paul couldn't do it because he was walking around with an unregistered license. Thomas couldn't do it because he doubted even though he had evidence. Judas couldn't do it because he was in it for the money. Timothy couldn't do it because he had ulcers. Peter couldn't do it because God was afraid he would fight back. Martha couldn't do it because she was battling with anxiety. The rich young ruler couldn't do it because he was too busy trying to buy Twitter. Jamal Harrison Bryant couldn't do it because if he was scared of needles, what he gonna do with nails? So he said, the only one I can think to do it is my own son, Jesus Christ. And so they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head and then he died. Can I tell you, that's not how the story ends. Three days later, he did it. He did it. He did it. And if he did it before, he'll do it again. Look at your neighbor. Tell him the replacement is coming. What you need, where you need it, and who you need it from. God will send the replacement. I'm going to pray for you. Lift up your hands. I'm going to pray for you. I pray, hear me with intentionality. I pray that God will bless you in the area you've had your greatest heartbreak. I pray that the new job, the new house, the new opportunity will delete the memories of the old person. I pray over every lifted hand that God give you the authority to command your day, to direct your feelings, and to speak into existence what it is that you need for your heart to feel safe. I speak of every lifted hand that God won't send you anybody who's too lazy to build something. I pray that God will give you the authority that until you find the replacement, you'll have the gumption to build for yourself. Those of you who are in this room, you survived. I need you to hear me. This ain't for your neighbor. You survived something that pulled your heart out of your chest and it's still beating. Would you give God thanksgiving? My time is so far over, it's, my time is spent. I, I done threw the whole clock away. And, um, but y'all ain't been to church in two years, it's all right. Um, yeah. 
I need to open this altar very quickly, please. I need to open this altar very quickly for those of you whose heart is fragile. For those of you whose heart is uh, on life support. I don't know where it is that you are. I don't know what it is that you've endured. I don't know what entanglement you had to get out of. But I need you to come, please. Hallelujah. It's almost like Edgar Allan Poe. You can hear your own heartbeat inside your chest. I know I'm supposed to be out of here. Church should have been over 10 minutes ago. I'm so sorry, but I, I can't leave with you being crippled. You'll leave it there. Leave it. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't leave with you still not sleeping good. All that authority, what you look like stalking their page. All that authority. Would it matter to you who they with? God got a replacement. I need you to pull in just a little bit as people come in behind you. I got a traffic jam on I-20. Come on. Help me. I said all the things um, your man wouldn't do, but that, that can be inserted for anything that is uh, connected to matters of the heart. You still heard about the church. Your experience there. You're in pain. Here it is about the friendship and how it went south. I, I, I know next week all of us are going to be in pastel colors and giving out flowers and going to brunch, but everybody's experience with their mom ain't healthy. Let's, let's play pretend next week. <laughs> But there are those who are at this altar that can't have a conversation for 20 minutes without it going somewhere else. There are those who are at this altar, those who are online, that still can't figure out why your grandmother had to raise you when your mom was healthy. God, I can't hear no real people right in here. Can't, can't figure out why they resent you when you never asked to be here. I want to pray that God will, um, will safeguard your heart. Only about five people know what it's like when you got the unfair responsibility to have to parent your parent. How am I coaching who's supposed to be mentoring me? Those of you who are online, I'm talking to you right now. This ain't for your neighbor. I need you to please um, lay your hands on your heart. Because you didn't even realize what you needed was a heart transplant. David said, create in me a clean heart. Oh God, renew a right spirit within me. Here's what's crazy. You keep saying you over it, but you won't date again. Keep saying you passed all of that. I don't care. But you swore to God and anybody who will listen. I ain't never going to let nobody get that close. I want to pray for you. I want you to press that hand into your heart till you can hear it beat. Jonathan, I prayed for you. You prayed for me. I love you. I need you to survive.
listen. That hand is on your chest, but I need you to know what is happening in this moment is you ain't turned to your neighbor. You are saying this to you. I need me. I need me to survive. Watch this. I ain't going to say stuff to myself that's going to injure me. I refuse to be my own toxic relationship. Come on, lay hands on your chest till you feel your own heartbeat. Come on, let's sing it together. Come on, everybody, raise it. I pray for you. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you too. You pray for me. I won't harm you. I need you to. Lord, I pray for every person at this altar, for every person online. That this week they'll fall in love with themselves. That this week they will reappraise their own value. That this week that they will stop putting themselves on sale and discounting their mistakes, not even realizing that that was the deposit that made them great. Thank you, dear Lord, for giving us the seed of knowledge to know you have in mind something and somebody greater. Thank you, dear Lord, that whatever comes next must be better than what was last. I better say that again. Whatever comes next has got to be better than what was last. And those of you, you believe that with every fiber of your being. Would you do me a favor? Would you just, we ain't done it in two years. Would you just embrace two people around you and just tell them you deserve something better. You deserve. You deserve something better. I won't. Everybody is standing. I'm going to open the doors of the church. Isn't it crazy that um, what Jesus asked for? Have you ever thought about what he asked for? He asked for you, give me your heart. Very softly. An old preacher once told me years ago, if you gave Jesus your heart and you got hot heart broken, then you took your heart out of the hands of God and you put it in the hands of somebody who couldn't handle it. Today, I want you to give Jesus your heart. Here it is, or what's left of it. I want you to give him your heart, saying, God, I choose you. I love you. I want to be connected to you. Wherever it is that you are in this room, can I say this to you? Devoid of any emotionalism, I want to speak straight to your heart that I need you to get saved before you get bitter. I need you to get saved before you become vengeful. I need you to get saved before you have a life full of regret. I don't want you to just get saved. I want you to join this church. 
And I'm believing that you're going to do it right now on this Sunday morning. Where do broken hearts go? They better get to new birth. I'm believing God for 40 of you to come this morning. I'm believing God for 40 of you to come from all over this sanctuary. I need you to come. Your life is on the line. Your heart is at stake. New birth, come on. Would you clap your hands as they come? Come on, clap your hands. Sometimes your heart wasn't broken by somebody you dated, somebody you married. Your heart was broken by somebody who raised you. Come on, I need you to come quickly. Please, I need you to come. Having a broken heart convolutes what you feel about people, how you interact with people, how you engage with people. That's why you love virtual church. You ain't got to ever turn to your neighbor. You just, I mean, that thing was the jam. That was it. You're just me in pajamas. I, I, I need you. Please help me because I'm, I'm still the absent of another 20 that need to be at this altar. And they need to come even in this moment. Wherever it is that you are, even those of you who are online, join newbirth.org. Give God some praise for this young man that's coming. Bless his name. All right, let's go to work. I done done all that I know how to do. I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning. I'm now giving the baton to y'all. Come on, give God some praise. I need you to do me a favor. Would you do a row check for me real quick? Make sure every person on your row is saved. Make sure every person on your row has a church home. Make sure every person in your row has given their life over to God. Come on, give God some praise. Here they come. Bless his name. God is a God that cannot lie. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. I'm almost where I need to go. Do me a favor so that we can get out of here. Would you just find somebody around you that got something, something blue on? They got something blue on. Uh, ask them for me. Are they saved? Ask them, do they have a church home? Amen. They got something blue on. I need you to talk to them. Ask them, do they have a church home? Ask them, have they given their life to God? Come on, give God some praise. Come on, here they come. Are you going to give God glory? Come on, for this beautiful couple, I need y'all to give God glory. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Stretch your right hand to faith. Stretch your right hand to faith. Amen. Pastor, why'd you make us talk to somebody with blue on? Old school saints know you wear black on communion Sunday. They ain't been to church in a long time. Amen. Here comes somebody else. Give God some praise. Here comes somebody else. Stretch your right hand to faith. Repeat after me, you're in the right place at the right time, joining the right church, serving only God. And I know that's right. If you know I'm right, say, show you right. Bless the Lord. I ask that you'll please follow our uh, leaders out this way. New birth, make some noise real quick. Come on, those of you at the altar, I need you to come this way. Leaders, are y'all helping me? Come on, come on. Thank you so very much. You may be seated. Y'all, please don't talk about me bad for keeping y'all in church long today. I'm going to do better next week. I promise you I'm going to do better. Uh, oh, they went to go get their stuff. Thank you. 
Amen. I'm going to challenge every person, every person. Uh, how many of you know you can trust God with your heart? How many of you know you can trust God with your heart? I'm going to challenge every person to sow a seed of $42. Ask our uh, media ministry if you'll put uh, giving up on the, on the uh, screen now. $42. Any person that's ever been ghosted, everybody ever been ditched, Everybody's still waiting on a phone call. Anybody who survived a divorce, amen. Whoever it is that you've been through, you've been through a heartbreak, but you survived it. It hurt for a while. Uh, but I'm telling you, God has been uh, uh, faithful even when we have not. I want you to sow that seed. Those of you who are online, I want to challenge you uh, in uh, so doing. Would you stand to your feet? Stand to your feet. As we leave this place, but never from God's presence, repeat after me, walk with God, and he'll walk with me. Talk with God, and he'll talk with me. Listen to God, and he'll listen to me. Build for God, and he'll build for me. Love God, because he first loved me. I want to say something to you. Next Sunday is Mother's Day, but I need you to hear my heart, hear my intention. Even if your mother has gone on to be with the Lord, I still want you to come to church. You are not going to be depressed on next Sunday. Amen. You are not going to be sad on next Sunday. I want you to come in church and rejoice that God gave you a God-fearing mother. I rejoice for the time that you did have. Amen. Do me a favor. If your mother has already gone on to be with the Lord, would you give God some praise for her even now? Bless his name. Lift your hand right where it is that you are. If nobody told you this week, I need you to know at the very least your pastor loves you. Lift that hand as high as you see yourself going. Now I want to him who is absolutely able to do anything but fail. May God make you sleepless until you help somebody. May God make you restless until you help yourself. May God irritate you until you have enough sense to worship him. And may God bless you until you have to give stuff away. Henceforth, now and forevermore, and the blessed people of God said, amen. The holidays are here. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> As you know, New Birth is a community-centered congregation. Being a part of this community means you are a part of our family. Yeah. And family spends the holidays together. We have several connection points that we like to make with you. Save the date for the following events. Saturday, November the 19th, our King's Table Ministry is hosting their annual Thanksgiving turkey giveaway. Mm -hmm. We plan to feed 3,000 families this year. If you or anyone you know needs help this Thanksgiving, let them know New Birth is here to help. Meet us at 10 a.m. for your free turkey. Thursday, November 24th, join us for a virtual Thanksgiving Zoom call. If you don't have any family present this day, your church family would love to spend it with you. Saturday, December the 17th, we're doing our annual toy drive event, so you don't want to miss that. And lastly, don't forget to save the date for Sunday, December 25th, and Saturday, December 31st. We're having our Christmas experience service and, of course, our New Year's Eve noonday and 10 p.m. service. Yes. Did you know you could listen to Dr. Bryant on the go? On your way to work, making dinner, or even cleaning up. We are excited to announce the newest platform that we have here at New Birth. We have a podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, Spotify, Pandora, or wherever podcasts are streamed. Head on over and subscribe today. We're looking for talent. So if you or anyone you know has a desire to be on screen with our video announcements team, please join us today, November 13th, immediately following service for a meet and greet in the library. It's going to be tons of fun, so we'll see you there. If this is your first time visiting New Birth, we want to say welcome. welcome. We pray you have enjoyed service today. We want you to stay connected to our ministry, so please text NB Connect to 71441. That's NB Connect to 71441. And if you need anything, don't hesitate to ask any of our member partners or ushers. Remember our vision, it's simple. Engage, equip, empower. We'll see you next time.